first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace! What's up, First World Order Radio? And Brother Aleem and the Goddess Kadera are busy, basically, um... You know, they got some business to take care of or whatever. So it is your brother, Michael Pratt, and I am going to be um, basically covering in for Brother Aleem tonight. And tonight's show, I believe, is A Man, Brother Panic, A Cult Book Listing Part 3. So we're going to get into that. But uh, first off, we're going to bring in, um, I believe that's Aerial Code 314. Is that Brother L? Yes, peace to the gods. Oh, peace, Brother L. Yo, it's, yo, it's been a minute, Brother L. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you brother remember L. me, King right? L. Huh? Yeah. You remember me, right? Oh, yeah. Was my brother, 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 oh, brother. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just no wanted doubt. to say, you know, it's been a minute. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going bring, to bring on Brother Panic. Six four six. Is that brother Panic. All right, what's going on? What's going on, brother Al? All right, Peace what's going God. on, brother? What brother Panic? Peace God. All right. Peace, brother Peace Panic. Almighty. All right, so Thursday night we're going to try to get through more of this book list tonight. This is uh, part three. We've been doing what we were doing, and we're going to keep on doing it. And I'm going to try to get through some more of these books faster because there's a lot of books. We're going to be here for the rest of the year. Just on this damn topic, so we're going mm-hmm. to um, I'm gonna get right into it, and again, get your pens and papers. We usually start a little bit later, so the chat room is still filling up. Let me see where we at. Whew. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're gonna keep going. Pick it up now. If you ain't heard for the last two weeks, we've been doing this book list, and uh, for the most part. Um, you need to yeah, hear part one and two because drop, I dropped all the foundation in and and all the reasons and the mentality you would need when you're dealing with this particular uh, these particular cold books. So now it's a matter of just getting down to the books. All mm-hmm. right. So uh, picking up from where we left off um, with a book list, 
Uh, another great book to get is called Love is in the Earth, A Kaleidoscope of Crystals um, by an author named Melanie, M-E-L-O-D-Y. And um, this book is interesting because it's probably the standard uh, when, you, when you're doing your crystal work. So uh, there are a lot of people who want to uh, get into this crystal thing. This book is excellent for it. And in fact, when you go into to crystal stores to buy crystals, You'll, have, you'll see the person in the store usually refer to uh, a book. It's either this book or the Crystal Bible. Um, but I like this book better because not only that, that she goes through a breakdown of all the crystals and all the gemstones. In the beginning, she tells you about the different types of crystals, how to clean them, how to handle them, how to uh, 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 program them, so on and so forth. Anything you need with a crystal, you'll find in this book from Melanie and it's a very popular book. Um, another good book uh, people should get, uh, have in their library, uh, is by Scott Cunningham. Scott Cunningham was a wicked writer. He's dead now, but he did a lot of encyclopedias, a lot of books that are uh, uh, very useful, very informative books, a lot of encyclopedias about minerals, crystals, candles, you know, Scott Cunningham was good for that. And one of the books he did that's very good called Hawaiian Magic and Spirituality, Scott Cunningham. And it gives you the opportunity to get a grasp on some Hawaiian deities uh, because we need to get into that. Yeah, um, I haven't even, yeah. <laughs> I haven't even fucked with them yet. <laughs> yeah, don't interrupt me, dog. We got to flow. Oh, my bad. Um, um, this is an excellent book, and this book is by a sister. I was actually going to bring this sister in. I was going to actually bring this sister in for a lecture, mm-hmm. and um, and but she's African in her. She doesn't speak as clear as 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 she may be great. I still may have her open up for a lecture, but the book she did is fucking outstanding. It's mm-hmm. actually an occult book. It's called The Mother Braid, A Hieroglyphic Signs and Simple Symbols of Traditional African Braids by Mama Kunta. It's her name. Mm-hmm. K O N T. K O N T A. And what's excellent about this book is uh every single hairstyle that we had as so called African Americans here, she she can explain the unconscious collective energy behind it. She explains the afro, the cornrows, uh, how hair was done and braided for specific wars, mm. utility, and she breaks down how we in America, the trends of hairstyles that we had, how it lined up with a certain mentality. For instance, when you don't braid your hair, it means you are free, i.e. the afro. So she she breaks down the afro and what it means personally and as a collective, probably very excellent, very deep but she didn't have a, a big grasp of the English language, um, you know, to the point where we understand it. But she may be excellent to open it, but the book, off the hook, The Mother Braid, mm-hmm. The Hieroglyphic Sign and Symbol of Traditional African Braids by Mama Kunta. And um, it's another good book. We talked about D.J. Conway. I told you to get anything by D.J. Conway, if you could. She's actually a woman writer uh, based upon Wiccan thing. D period J last name C O N W A Y, the Little Book of Candle Magic. Um, another good book, um, Wicked Wicca Candle Magic by uh, Garina Dunwich D U N W I C H. Uh, I like this book. She goes through a lot of uh, the candle colors from the Wiccan perspective, the standard, the standard color. Uh, perspective of the candles. She also adds deities to the candles and colors. So it's very informative for anyone who wants to get into candle magic. Another good book, Urban Voodoo, A Beginner's Guide to Afro-Cuban Caribbean Magic by Jason Black and Christopher Hyatt, Ph.D. Um, Excellent book because in this book they kind of update the voodoo uh, with some of the things that you see today in the urban setting. So as I pointed out to you guys before in detail, how uh, it is uh, very important for you to update 
how you think about these magical apparatuses while you have certain people trying to promote how you're supposed to keep this thing pure. You need to understand that this magic is dynamic. And as your environment changes, you have to update and change your magical uh, thought process and your magical traditions and practices with it to live up to your environment today. Here's a book that proves that this is the way to go. This is a good book. Uh, Khadija really likes this book. It was her book. It's called The Way of the Cartouche by Murray Hope. And he goes through a lot of different sciences about the cartouche, the symbols, what they mean, um, when they're enclosed, when they're not enclosed. So anything you would ever want to know about the hieroglyphic symbol, the cartouche, is in this book. Uh, this is another book of Khadija's, but an uh, excellent good book. Uh, the Triple Goddess Tarot by Isha Lerna. Um, it's basically a tarot book, uh, a particular tarot. She probably did the, uh, a triple goddess tarot. So just uh, one, I guess Khadija was into that and has the deck. This is her mm-hmm. shit. Um, okay, this is a pretty good book. Um, Brazilian pa- Palo Prima uh, by uh, Kimbanda uh, uh, Recipes. To Make What You Want, Love, Money, Business, and Life by Robert Laramie. Robert Laramie is actually a pen name for Baba Raul Carnazares, who also made the book on Paulo, which he uh, is actually Paulo Monte. Paulo Monte is, if you had to define it, would be called Good Paulo, as opposed to Paulo Miyambe, which is the darker side, and what Carlos uh, Montenegro gave forth in his English uh Offering, which we talked about already. This is another book that is more specific to the uh, South American uh, uh, rendition of Paulo because most of that Paulo stayed alive either in Cuba or in South America. It just exactly. it, it just changed the name to uh, there was just different names they were calling it there. Hmm. So now, as people became more uh, uh, interested in Paulo. Um, some of the Brazilian stuff he put in this little book, a Brazilian primer. This is where he has the deity Palmagera, a few other deities, to give you another uh, another perspective of of uh, some, certain Palo traditions and recipes you can do. All right, another book by Carlos Montenegro. We talked about Carlos Montenegro. Um, Carlos Montenegro to give you a refresher memory. Uh, to refresh your memory, was a guy who uh, did the Palo. Uh, he did Palo. Uh, was one of the first guys to give a Palo offering in English, and he was ostracized for it, outcast for it. Mm. All the uh, all the Poleros who follow it as a religion uh, spoke on all day of how this was not wrong, this was wrong, and this was um, not true Palo, but but because, and I believe because especially Bobby and myself, that there is now a bigger Apollo following when there was none before because uh, Bobby did a lot of work to demystify it. And after Bobby did mystify it, um, I was able to do a lot of work from the MySpace era of helping to demystify and share information with it. So you hear this word more often. And I know for absolute fact students of Bobby and myself because they would tell me that they actually would seek out Carlos Montenegro because he was still offering classes. So now with this new uh, surge in interest in Paulo, um, Carlos Montenegro put out a lot of books in English or a lot of his books that were previously in Spanish into English. One of them on the 12 divisions, Dominican voodoo. So this is, remember Haiti and voodoo shares an island and you don't hear too much about Dominican magic, it's called Divisions. So here's a book on it, The 21 Divisions, Dominican Voodoo by Carlos Montenegro. Excellent book. He goes through some of the Dominican saints and some of the Dominican uh, recipes and rituals. And he also, Carlos Montenegro also has a book called Reversibles, Spells and Rituals by Carlos Montenegro, Um, a whole entire book on how to reverse spells how to reverse um how to reverse uh uh any uh hexes that were put on you and so on and so forth. 
Another good book called Papa Jim's Herbal Magic Workbook, How to Use Herbs for Magical Purpose and Guide from A to Z Guide. Uh, this is a book where he uses a lot of the folk names and some of the real names for a bunch of herbs. I told you you can get herbs at mountainroseherbs.com. About 95% of the herbs that's in these books you can find there. And he has a list of recipes and combinations you can do for any form of magic, any form of human magic and some advanced magic as well. If you can get this, uh, The Life and Works of Marie Laveau, Gris Gris. Uh, let me get these glasses out. Charms, Hexes, and this is another book by Robert, uh, Baba Raul Carnazares. I don't know if he writes it under Robert Laramie. No, he writes it under Raul Carnazares. Life and Works of Marie Laveau, Gris Gris Cleansing, Charms, and Hexes. And this book is the works of Marie Laveau, actually, and... and uh, it's the works of Marie Laveau actually and she and and he actually is just reprinting it. Uh another good book, Moon Spells, How to Use the Phases of the Moon to Get What You Want by Diane Alaquist. Um, you know, and she just goes through all the moon phases and how to use it for those who are starting out. Eventually, as I pointed out, you should get past moon phases. All right, what I'm gonna do now is go and get some more books. All right. I'm going to go through these tonight because we're going to move on to something else. All right. This one is skinny tonight. I like to see skinny wounds. <laughs> All right. So, a second. Need another stack of books going on. So, I'm going to go through these things. Most of those books yeah, was- that you just heard and that I gave you are from. from uh, Magic books, standard botanica magic. And with mm-hmm. those standard botanica magics and standard traditional and ritual magics, um, it is in your interest and probably a great idea for you also to add something to that magic for it to uh, actually be taken up a notch. Um, all right, so we're about to keep going. Um all right, so we're going to get into these books. This is an excellent book called Dionysus, Myth and Cult by Walter F. Otto. An excellent book because what you will find out is one of the tools you need to be able to access is the word called correspondence when you study. To be able to read and study something that you understand Right. And something that you may not understand or something that you barely understand or something that you get fragmented information on, you can you can correspond it with something that you do understand, then you're able to fill in the holes. For instance, there's very little information on Osiris, which we do understand. But um, if you were to read Dionysus, you were cl- it would be clear that you understand Dionysus is just a Greek version of Osiris which Mm -hmm. there's a shitload of information on Dionysus. So the things that are missing about Osiris, if you were to study Dionysus, even the name is Dionysus or Ionysus or Mm -hmm. Dionysus. It's just really, it's it's a collaboration of Isis and Osiris. And uh, if you were to study Dionysus, it's a way of filling in the blanks about Osiris. So an excellent book on Dionysus, which is uh, something we should be into as a standalone subject, is Dionysus, Myth and Cult by Walter F. Otto. Excellent. And this Dionysus is big. If you remember the second season of True Blood, that whole entire season was about them raising up Dionysus. So he's not a minor deity. In fact, the deity Pan is, is said basically when he grow up, he becomes Dionysus of the wine cult. And the wine represents the grape, which I broke down and told people is actually the ovary. They're talking about men. They're talking about mm-hmm. uh, men, uh, menstruating women. It was a menstruating woman cult, not actual wine. And you know he has all the same bull and, and you know iconery as Osiris, you know that father figure. Another good book is Gods and Love of Ecstasy: The Traditions of Shiva and Dionysus by Alan Dandelou. It is actually uh, it's actually 
exactly what I'm talking about in terms of correspondence. And this book is an entire book where he takes a Greek deity, Dionysus, and a Hindu deity, Shiva, and he points out correspondence. So it's not just me saying correspondence. In your study, you'll come across a book where he's actually done a whole book on corresponding two different deities to show you the similarities between the two. And both of these, and, and as well, uh, Shiva is also an Osirian figure. So basically to read these, if you're caught up on, well, that's Hindu and I'm a black person, so Osiris is mine, or that white man ain't got nothing to do with it, you need to remember the only thing they're doing is is copying one template of a certain science, which is your science. There's exactly. nothing outside of your science. They don't have one, and we don't. And we don't. It's not like we have one, and they have one. We're the only thing going here, and we're the only ones with one. Exactly. Therefore, mm-hmm. therefore, therefore, um, uh, anything they can do is only a, a cheap rendition of you, and they're trying to sell it to you as if it has some sort of origin that's greater or outside of you. That's fantasy. So anything they can come with. Um, it's it's still fruitful to you to, for you to study because they're only they they're, they're confident in releasing all this information and they're confident in this because they feel you believe it's theirs and you won't deal with it and you feel that Dionysus and somebody like that has nothing to do with you but once you take it that's the scariest thing for them because you put it back under the the original origin of where it came from. Um. This is an excellent book if you can get it. Um, it was something I came across, um, came across magically. So this dude, this dude from the spirit world, presented himself to me. Therefore, he wanted to inject himself in the conscious frequency, and that's someone called Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda, V I V E K A N A N D A. He's very popular among among the Hindu religion. So there are people in the conscious world before me saying his name who do know his name do, who do know his name based upon uh their study of Hindu mythology. Uh Swami Vivekananda was a student of a more famous Swami called Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna, they have books on them and we'll get to them in a moment. Um they're, they're actually in this list when it comes up. And and he was one of his students, but uh, Swami Vivekananda went on to uh, you know to his own particular fame. Now I read, I was reading about Swami Vivekananda. It hit, I knew who he was, but nothing ever came about. When I was working at the computer uh, spot, and I could tell you a thousand magical things with that that I was doing. Um, to make it short, um, eventually we were getting outsourced and some guys from India actually came over. And I did a certain amount of magic where I had a whole section to myself of cubicles. It was just me and, and a whole half the floor was just empty. I would just go there every day and just read. So, of course, they put the Hindu dudes there. And what was interesting, the channel started coming. I started dropping all sorts of shit on them. You this energy, you that energy, that this energy. These motherfuckers was flipping because they said they do their pujas to every deity that I was saying, I was like, you hand him it. He's like, I do my pujas to hand him it. You this one. I do my pujas to this one. It was dropping, they was, and they was hitting me with ill shit, too, because you get this contradiction with Kali. You know, the deity, the goddess Kali, you'll hear, oh, mother divine and, and light and this and that. But then you hear about this vicious ass killer in the same sentence, and it was hard to determine what they were talking about. And they said, of course, in the cosmic aspect, she's the sweet great mother, the Hathor, but on earth she's fierce because of her disdain for the ignorance of humanity. So she's the destroyer. So what one of the dudes just happened to tell me, said, when you do your pujas to Kali, if you say the pujas forward, a chance forward, you get that divine mother. He said, but if you say her chance backward, you, you can say her chance and put her on somebody, you get the destroyer. Which is which is not in any books in this motherfucker. Nigga straight from India told me that, and the nigga from India was telling me about all these temples over there. First of all, he said he said I got houses over there. Anytime you want to come, he, I still talk to these dudes on Facebook. Mm. Anytime you want to come, just come to India. I show you houses. He said he was telling me about all these temples. He's like, there's a temple that floods every day. 
and then the water recedes. They don't know where the water comes from. You see, there's temples that the, the whole building is fucking tilted on the outside. You walk in, everything is straight up. You tell me about all that they can't explain. These are the ones that they say you can't explain, all these temples over there. And he just started telling me, out the blue, the story about Swami Vivekananda, who I just happened to know who, who he was by reading this other book. When we get to it, I'll let you know what it is. What he did was said, you're dying. He started just telling me 911 is famous over here, but in our country, 911 is famous for different reasons. He said in 1914 or wherever, or even earlier, he said they had a big religious convention in America. Right. And he said Swami Vivekananda is the one who came to represent uh, India. And he said, when everybody was talking to shit, Swami Vivekananda got up and said, I came here for my brothers and sisters in America, talking about black people, mm-hmm. which was, niggas was just fresh out of slavery. You get what I'm saying? Right. And he said, I came here for my brothers and sisters in America. He said he got a five-minute standing ovation. Now, y'all need, it sounds like it's nothing, but you got to remember, a nigga stand up and clap for five minutes for you. That's a long fucking time. Right. And he said, um, he, and he was saying it, and I didn't realize it was a channel that I got home. I was like, why did he tell me that story? And then I was realizing these people that visit me was the deities coming to America to check us out. Because all they did was question me and give me information and balance. Because I was mm-hmm. like, y'all niggas going to live here? I was like, just... They, their heart is made of something different that you've never even witnessed. And I was so sad and so compassionate for them. I was like, y'all niggas stay here. Y'all going to be fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they're like, nah, we just stay here for a couple of weeks. We go home. I was like, ooh, lucky for y'all. Because I thought they were going to be you know, in this motherfucker. So Swami Vivekananda, Meditation and Its Methods, uh, See if you can get that. His name is spelled B-I-V-E-K-A-N-A-N-D-A. I'm sure he has a Wikipedia page. And anybody dealing with the spiritual shit, get with him in your life. And his teacher, which we'll get to in a few, Sri Ramakrishna. All right. Another good book, The Kuan Yin Chronicles, The Myth and Prophecies of the Chinese Goddess of Compassion by Martin Palmer and Jay Ramsey's. Uh, Jay Ramsey is the author. Uh, this was a pretty good book. Um, it was a little bit hard to read the way they write, but worth it because to understand Kuan Yin, which is nothing more than the, uh, what is she, uh, Tibetan, I believe, um, or Chinese, Chinese Tibetan, I believe, and she is nothing but the Chinese ISIS. Hmm. And, but her story is that she originally was the goddess Tara and the green Tara. In Tara, uh, you get the word uh, terraform. It means uh, you get the word terrorist. You get the word tears that comes from this goddess, the green Tara. And the green Tara is actually, uh, uh, when she came through, I was dealing with the green Tara. There's a phenomenal story with that. And the last night she came through, uh, uh, three things happened with the heart and, you know, and all of this. It was a big deal. You know, I've talked about this story before. I'll spare you. But at the same time, I, I went to the museum, the Brooklyn Museum and the Met, and a phenomenon happened in both museums. At this particular time, I went, the Met has a whole room of Kuan Yin and what they call a monk called the Bodhisattvas. So when I went to Brooklyn, they also have a few statues of the Bodhisattva. So when I went to Brooklyn, I stood in front of this Bodhisattva, and, like, if I had to count on my fingers the time where I felt I had to move because the energy was that fucking powerful, they, they created it. They used something called acacia wood, to make the mm. statues. The Camites use acacia wood sometimes as well. You know what I mean? It's probably wood. When you see this acacia wood, it looks alive. And when they get the eyes, when they have a whole statue full of this acacia wood, it looks alive. So much so, acacia is one of the things I use in the herb pack. Now, um, I had to move. It was just that powerful was drawing me in. 
I never heard of this word before. I took a picture of it so I remembered this word bodhisattva. So maybe a week later on, on my museum tour, I went to the Met, go into this room, see Kuan Yin, see they have big, powerful Kuan Yin's, and they have bodhisattvas again. Without knowing it was the bodhisattva, I'm getting drawn into this energy again. This shit was wild. Mm-hmm. So, so that's it. I have to go home mm-hmm. and remember to look up what the bodhisattva is. So after all this Tara shit was going down, Tara means tears, so I'm, I was sporadically, tears are sporadically coming out my eyes as I'm studying it, found out Tara means tears. I was like getting so bad that I had to call Bobby to get his advice. Called him, explained his body, bodhisattvas in Tara and why is this happening, what is the deal. So now he explains to me, well, the bodhisattvas are basically a title. They... Uh, stemming from the Buddhist or the monk. And the bodhisattvas become so adept in compassion that when they die, they go all the way to the height, let's just say, of light, of universe, to the point of where they can be absorbed and they can no longer do anything for humanity. So far, beyond humanity, they are no longer able to do anything uh, in terms of communication. But before they make that leap, they turn around based upon compassion for humanity and come back as the goddess Kuan Yin. So the Bodhisattvas become the goddess Kuan Yin, and it all stems from the Tara energy, or they'll say Tara, or a priesthood of Tara, becomes Kuan Yin. So Tara the Terrible eventually has compassion. And it's the same uh, Kali story. As I told you, you've got to understand correspondence. Now we see that Kali is this terrible mother, but her cosmic version is compassionate and loving. What they did was separate it into two goddesses. This Tibetan goddess, Green Tara, is this terrible one. That's why her name is actually Tara for terrible or Tara. And she becomes this compassionate goddess, Kuan Yin. Hmm. And so what was happening was, around this time of Tara, what was happening was, I was dealing with all this advanced shit because at the time I couldn't get enough of it. Whatever was going on, I was in it three feet deep. I didn't, I was not uh, lecturing to anyone. There was no radio shows. There was nothing oh. I was doing but having uh, doing this work by myself. I was in it all day. No girlfriend, just fucking a bunch of witches who didn't give a fuck, just bring the dick over. They don't even want to go to the movie. So I didn't have to take anybody to the movies, argue about Chinese food, none of this shit. What I had to do was just fuck, go home, and fuck for a scientific purpose and study. Half deep. So I was on my grind, and I was, and I was reaching and touching spiritual places. A lot of motherfuckers wasn't breaking through. I was talking to anybody, doing anything, finding out any information I wanted. I was doing the bodhisattva work. And, but what was clear was, I must have turned around with the compassion to come back because after that I started teaching and started being and started what it start and and y'all know me from the beginning I was a little bit more coarse in how I dealt with it but you can see people who have been around since 2008 2009 when I started that there's more and more compassion started to emerge now what was happening and I talked about it briefly I would watch TV shows and fucking start crying, be emotional about this shit. Dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not even not even real shit like ghosts. Right. It'd be shit like the Jeffersons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? George go to Hawaii. Oh, my God, George is in Hawaii. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> crying and shit. And it, the shit was wild. Like, you know, just movies like uh, uh, some good shit. Don Cheadle will be in. They talk about Martin Luther King. And, like, and scientifically... Logically, I don't give a fuck about no civil rights. But I can still see that shit, and I had to really evaluate what the fuck is going on here. Like exactly. first, I was watching the, the first thing that happened. It was I watched the movie Scrooged, and and Bill Murray gives this fucking monologue about Christmas. Just see someone, give them a gift, give them a hug. It's Christmas, and I'm sitting there. It is Christmas. <laughs> and now I, this is baffling to me. You get what I'm saying? So when I got into more of the Kuan Yin study, I said, oh, I get it. It's not that on a human level 
that I'm feeling sorry in our classic context. What's coming out is the energy of compassion, compassion that I feel for the situation of my brethren and sister. You get what I'm saying? Not in the way where save the babies, save the woman, she'll protect and respect us. All of those are slogans that are fucking hollow because niggas will, you know what I mean, stab you and sell you out and throw your mm-hmm. kids under the bus. Exactly, so those yeah. are just hollow statements. Not talking about in a hollow statement way. Not talking about in a way where I need to be a little bit more courteous to you. What we're just talking about is what we're talking about is is the the, the entire plight that puts us down here is still a form of suffering. I don't care who you are or how advanced you are. You don't want to see no kid get hurt, no woman get hurt. No old lady get pushed down the stairs, and you're not going to walk away and say, fuck it, I'm a cultist. I'm past humanity. That's not <laughs> what it's about. You know what I'm saying? You see right. someone in distress, you're going to naturally want to help them based upon compassion, not really raising up humanity, but based upon compassion because nobody wants to see anybody suffer. You get what I'm saying? So our greater suffering, I started feeling the compassion for and even started to see when you, I see little things on TV people helping each other, it still touches a part of compassion because you still want to see other motherfuckers make it comfortable in this Holocaust. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it becomes as honorable as giving someone in jail Twinkies when they're starving. You know what I'm saying? Just giving someone a plate when they're starving. It's, you could do this for humanity purpose to make yourself feel good that you did something for humanity, but then there's sometimes you meet people who are driven deeper than trying to get a camera put on them for it. You get what I'm saying? You know Madonna's trying to get a camera put on her for every time she's fucking feeding a little black kid in public, and then you know there's some people who will sit around and save a black kid whether camera's in or out, compassion. So this Mm -hmm. Guan Yin is the study of that compassion. Um, Scott Cunningham, which I just talked about, he has a book called Earth, Air, Fire, and Water, The Techniques of Natural Magic, uh, based upon Wiccan, but very good. Um, I'm going to leave this one out. It's a Hanneman book. It's a complex book. I'll still give it to you. A lot of Hanneman chants. It has it in English and in uh, uh, their native language. Uh, by Sundra, Sundra Kananda. Sund, Sundrara Kananda. S U N D A R A K N K A N D A. Um, if you can get it, see, I thought it was okay, but if you got the money, I would say get that. A book that I, I would say to absolutely get is called Kali the Goddess by Dr. Chit Rali Kaha Singha Prim, Prim Nat and Dr. Lip, Lipika Singha. First one spelled Dr. C H I T R A L E K H A. Last. S I N G A. The second author, P R E M N A T H. The third name, L I P I K A S I N G A. And this is called Kali the Goddess. They do a good job on dealing with Kali. Um, another good book, The Hindu Way of Awakening it, Its Revelations, Its Symbols, An Essential, uh, an essential View of resist, uh, Religion, Swami. Kit Yan Nanda, and it was a white guy who was, who was named Donald Walters, but he changed his name to Swami Kit Yananda, uh, Yananda, Kri Yananda, I guess. K R I Y N A N A D A. It's pretty good. I mean, he goes through some of the Hindu principles. He's explaining it to. He's, he explains it in the context of if you've never heard it before. So those who've never heard it before need to hear it. Uh, ex- this book is excellent. Uh, Kundalini Agora, H G H O R A, uh, number two is the one I have. This was one of those books we were in uh, East West, which is an occult bookstore in New York. I was all uh, stacked up on books. Bobby's like, "You got to get this." I'm like, "Come on, nigga, my pockets don't do <laughs> like that." And he said, "Well, fuck it. I, I want you to have this book because I'm gonna buy it for you." And he mm-hmm. bought it and, and just put it in my stack because he Wonderful. thought it was that important. And mm-hmm. turned out it motherfucking was. Oh, Anything and everything you want to mm-hmm. know on Kundalini on a basic level. So it's a good book for someone starting out. It's an easy read. 
Kundalini Agora, H-G-O-H-O-R-A, two by Robert E. Shivova, Shivova, S-V-O-B-O-D-A. Excellent. A must-have. Another good book, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of the Godhead, the Divine Grace. Um, let me see who wrote this. N.C. Bahava Danta Swami, B-H-A-K-T-I-V-E-D-A-N-T-A, Swami. Uh, excellent book on Krishna, everything you need to know about Krishna and his mythology. Very good uh, for those starting out. You know, you want Krishna. Krishna is the Christ. There are many Christ figures in the world and mythology that Jesus is actually a later day hacked from, but most of what Jesus was hacked from was actually Krishna. In fact, even the name Christ. Um, so, so if you want to read the true baby Jesus, that's Krishna and him and his his exploits growing up in the Christ energy, that's actually talking, and, and really they're talking about melanin. Krishna is melanin. That's why he's blue, melanin is blue. Because you ever notice every dark-skinned nigga in your hood, what do we call him? What up, black, right? Right. But the nigga who's really dark, we call that nigga blue. They go blue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. The blue is melanin, you know what I'm saying? You know, the blue black. And Krishna is blue. Um, I broke that down in the movie Avatar, why they were using the blue and how you knew they were black people, because blue represents that melanin. So Krishna is blue, he represents melanin. So you want to read about melanin in its mythological context, you want to read about Krishna, it represents your consciousness, it represents your Christ, and so on and so forth. Another excellent book, a must-have, Kali, the Black Goddess of Dunkshine's War. D A K S H I N E S W A R Elizabeth U Harding. This is a white girl who's all Kali in love, and she goes in on to India, and there's a shrine to Kali. So she she deals with the shrine, how the shrine is dealt with, the mentality, what's it all about. But this is the book where she talks in depth about one of Kali's devotees, Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna, who I talked about earlier, is the right. teacher of Vivekananda. In this book, you'll find a lot about the deity Sri Ramakrishna, who also came in the spirit world to me, and I talked about it at the time. I did a whole entire show on Kali and Sri Ramakrishna and some of the revealings he revealed when he came through as a spirit. Very powerful. Said he wants to get down with the get down. He did all of this shit. Like, uh, and when you read in the book, what you'll find as is... He's one who colored outside the lines. And then you had all the traditional traditionalists, the same type of shit you hear today, that's not right, you're supposed to do it that way, that try to go up against him. So they had to, what they did was, seeing his entire devotion and seeing all the scholars, they, they started to bring scholars to evaluate his well-being. Because, you know, every day at a certain time they would bring out all this food for Kali, no one would eat the food. The food would spoil, I believe they said. And, you know, people had a problem with this. But he would start eating the food right off the shrine and would tell people he's Kali. He started dressing in drag and you know, all this kind of shit. So that was unheard of at that time. And people were like, well, you know, he, he lost his goddamn mind. So they would evaluate him, and each person that would evaluate him, all these scientists, would walk out the room and say, leave him the fuck alone. We, that's Kali right there. Kali is on earth through this man. So him being such a strong devotee of Kali, um, and like in fact, he told Vivekananda the exact date that you, he would die. He said, "You're gonna." He said, "You're not gonna die. You're just gonna transcend. You're gonna leave the planet on this day at this time in this year, and that should happen on that day or at that time and that year." And they couldn't figure out what Vivekananda had died from. But he transcended. There's a name for that that I had at the time because the same exact thing happened to C. Freeman L. Mm-hmm. And C. Freeman L. came down and told me, uh, told me about that and told me uh, that uh, that would happen to us, me and Bobby. He said it happened to him. And 
Remember, T, C. Freemanel went and studied with the swamis. C. Freemanel was a certified swami. He wasn't just a guy who was good at it. He was a certified swami, and his mm-hmm. the whole thing was everything we're talking about in these Hindu traditional books of meditation and transcendence through meditation. So he was one of them. So at that time, when he made the transcendent, after he told me a lot of good shit that he told me, certain meditations, in fact, I just remembered one. Uh, the figure eight, if you were to lay it on his side, it makes the uh, 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 sign of infinity. If you were to close your eyes, roll your eyes at the top of your head to look at your pineal gland and move your head in the shape of that figure eight, this is how, remember, Eddie Murphy used to do that joke about Stevie Wonder? And on Saturday Night Live, and Eddie Murphy used to move his head like Stevie Wonder, but it was actually moving in the figure eight. You're doing the same thing in your meditation. You say you will, te- you will start to transcend and try that in your meditation. So I was doing that on an herb pack. Get an herb pack, smoke it, and do that figure eight meditation. Watch what mm. the fuck happens in that bar. Watch wow. stuff. That's from Steve Freeman now. Um, Sri Ramakrishna gave me a meditation. When I did the Sri Ramakrishna lecture, I did not give it out. He said, you, you better be very adept before you do this meditation. Because when you do this meditation, if you, if you cannot focus your thoughts, you will, it will work. And you, if your thoughts are fucked up, I, you will pull out as fucked up. Right. Now, what we know is when we think or create a thought or ask a question, we create what you call a vortex in our brain. And that vortex must get filled with the answer. This is something I teach in my class. But the problem is we do not understand the language of the subconscious mind or how, or how the answer may appear. So we may miss the answer. You get what I'm saying? So we ask a question, what is melanin? What is chakra? What is this? It will come to us. It can come to us in many ways. It can come to us scholarly. It can come to us by right. on TV, the radio. It could come to us in a dream. It could come to us by another person in Walmart, by a janitor, a bum, a dog. It will answer you. That I would. I don't want to say the universe will answer you because your your particular is question is answering you, but is using any means necessary. You just have to be sensitive enough as an occultist to be able to read how spirit talks to you. That takes a practice to get back into the swing of that. And if you know you're asking a question, if you know you're pondering on something, you know the answer is you will receive the answer. You just have to be adept enough to receive it. But one of the things you can do to rush this in your meditation, and this is from Sri, uh, this is from Sri Ramakrishna, is you visualize a vortex going clockwise, coming from the from the uh, cosmos directed to a point in your pineal gland. And you're trying to visualize what your answer is, not what the question is at this point, what your answer is. And what you're actually doing is pulling from the cosmos, which is nothing more than a data bank of all information of everything in existence. There's nothing new in existence. So it, everything in existence resonates at a location. You just have to be able to tap into that level to be able to pull it back through your mind on earth, your mind being like a TV, i.e. tune into the channel. So the, if you create the vortex, you then create the wind tunnel to bring your answer quicker to you, a little bit more dynamic. But you need to be stay in focus. You need to see the vortex build up stay in focus the entire time you're visualizing the vortex and then be able to shut the vortex down because you don't want to keep the vortex up while your mind wanders. Right. So, again, people have problems with wandering minds in their meditation. Yet another reason to have an herb pack because it's one of the things that helps you focus in your meditation. Mm. You, you smoke, bring this in, bring a clockwise uh, vortex for bringing something to you. If you're trying to release something into the universe that's bothering you, counterclockwise vortex. Very powerful meditation that works every time, like Coke 45. So you niggas need to know you've been blessed with that tonight. And what you need to understand is that what you need to understand is 
you don't want to dick around with that. You want to do that mm-hmm. um, uh, as long as you're sure that you can handle it and keep your thoughts focused because if you think of some dumb shit, then that dumb shit will emerge. It will emerge. And, um, and uh, like I said, also study up on Sri Ramakrishna so you have a full, th- uh, full understanding of it. Uh, Shiva, the wild god of power and ecstasy by Wolf Dieter Stolor. Stolor looks like Stolor, Ph.D. W-O-L-F hyphen D-I-E-T-E-R. Last name S T O L S T O R L. He's a PhD. And anything you want to know about the god Shiva, you will love Shiva. If you love Dionysus, you love the black man, which we'll read in that book, will thoroughly convince your monkey ass Shiva is a guaranteed nigga. Guaranteed. You know what I'm saying? His whole goal is to smoke weed all day and fuck. That's a nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. That's a nigga. In fact, they show you on these documentaries, these priests of Shiva, all they do is get up, lay naked on the street, beg for weed. She was, she was, they call it bang a bong or bang bang or something, but it's weed. She was a hemp smoker. So all they do is smoke, beg for food and smoke weed, sit out and party. I said, oh, my God, if that ain't nigga shit. Y'all niggas don't know what nigga shit is. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Now, um, another excellent book. This is a must-have. Hindu Goddesses. Uh, Visions of the Divine Feminine in the Hindu Religions Tradition uh, by David R. King- Kingsley. This, no home should be without if you're dealing with any Hindu, which you should be dealing with any uh, Hindu uh, 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 work. These goddesses. Pravati, Aditi, Savati, Vak, Riti, Ratiri, uh, Sri Lakshmi, Pravati, Savati, Sita, uh, let me see, uh, Radha, Durga, Kali, the Mahava Diva, Divas, uh, uh, the Matrikas, uh, Tara, goddess of sacred geography, and village goddesses. The Tara in Hindu mythology is different from the Tibetan green Tara of tears that I was talking about. So know there is a difference. And even the Tibetan green Tara is, there's the white Tara and I think there's a red or blue Tara or perhaps both. But the green Tara is the one we're interested for the story that I told you. This is a source book, the Rig Veda. This is basically the Bible, the Hindu Bible. Every, every home needs a Rig Veda, R-I-G-V-D. Just get whatever version is popping. That's basically like the Bible. And, and, um, that's the source of a lot of this, uh, most of the mythology. This is a good, uh, okay book. I'll, I'll give you the best book on Hanuman. This one is called Hanuman, the Ramayana of Val Kill Me uh, by Catherine Ludwig. It's pretty good. And only bad based upon her writing is why mm-hmm. I say it's okay. Um, I'll give you a better Hanuman book. Uh, but what, you, what the, the true mythology, most of the mythology in Hanuman is in something, a story called the Ramayana. And I'm not big on reading stories, but when I did read the Ramayana, this is one of those stories that I couldn't put down. And um, so I would go as far as to say... Uh, if you need a break, read, get into the Ramayana. It's in story form. It's in story form, and um, it is uh, uh, it is in story form, and it's a hell of a story. But in it, the scholars will definitely pull out the Hanumans, because Hanuman, Hanuman is the bulk of that story. Stories about uh, uh, Sita and Rama get uh, uh, outcast into the jungle, and Sita eventually gets kidnapped by uh, 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 ooh, I can't remember the name. Uh, 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 it'll come to me. But basically, uh, uh, this deity that uh, this demon that catches her uh, does it out of ego, pride, and she represents she represents beauty or consciousness that is 
that the dude didn't do the work to obtain. So, so while he's holding a prisoner, prisoner, her husband Rama um, has uh, Ravana is the demon that captures her. By she is captured by Ravana. Rama and his brother, who helped him, uh, uh, I'll remember that in a second too. Forgetting all these goddamn names, uh, uh, who who helps him uh, has to wage this big campaign to rescue her. Now later on, that story became Helena of Troy. So while they're trying to front with Brad Pitt like Helena of, of Troy is some sort of fucking story that is based upon history, mm. you know, it's still. Still, it's not. Even, they can't even make up a story to bullshit with. You right. understand what I'm saying? They're still getting it from our shit. So the exactly. entire Raman Yana story later becomes Helena of Troy. This woman gets kidnapped, and they wage this big campaign to go rescue her. You'll hear the the, the mm-hmm. where they get this horse, where they uh, the Trojan story, all that shit. It's in the right, Raman exactly. Yana canon, mm-hmm. all of that shit, where they amass this great amount. This great detailed army to eventually go and rescue Sita, and you'll hear this a very interesting, and you'll hear the exploits of Hanuman and his devotion, and so much so that Hanuman has a following. And this story is in the Ramayana, probably one of the best, most romantic stories you could read. There's also a story even older than that about the moon god Soma that uh, uh, kidnaps the goddess Tara again. I can't mm. remember if it's the green Tara, but you can read a little bit of that story guaranteed in the book, uh, the book uh, um, by uh, Charles Russell Cordier and Patricia Turner, uh, the uh, Dictionary of Ancient Deities. If you look up Tara, you will find um, the story of Soma. I don't think it's, it may not be the Bean Tara, but the story that Soma kidnaps her and there's this cosmic, all these cosmic deities come and they come to rescue Tara. And it's a cosmic story in the stars. Later day, because we couldn't grasp cosmic understanding, we had to bring it down to Earth and it becomes the story of Hanuman and this earthly fight. Then later, later day, it becomes a bunch of fucking white people waging this regular war where they're trying to make you think that the shit could have possibly happened when it was actually a cosmic story. And yet again, our story. So, exactly, yeah. wanna, so I'll give you better Hanuman books as we go along. Um, I don't know if you want to get this. It, depending on how spiritual you are, this is something that has a lot of the writings of Vivekananda. But these writings of Vivekananda were more religified. I didn't buy this book, but the uh, I told you the guys from India came over, and he felt he needed to give me this book. It's called Sadhana of Service, S A D H A N A of Service, by an author called E K N A T H R A N A D E F Eknath Radney. Not, and, you know, it was a good, you know, he was trying to be nice and gave it to me. And as I'm reading through it, it's more of their later day when this stuff was religified. But it does have some writings of Vivekananda. So if Vivekananda comes through, and you can't help yourself, you may want to add that to your shit. Um, this was pretty good. Beyond Birth and Death, India's most renowned Vedic authority presents startling evidence of the soul's incredible journey after death. It's a little book, but he talks about, uh, uh, you know, concepts beyond birth and death. This is, this I would say is a good little reading for someone who's new, who, is, who hasn't seen the worlds beyond this world. I have personally witnessed many times many revelations beyond this world, so therefore reading a book like this, I don't need the proof. You know, in the back it says, their life after death, um, Srila, and I'll spell it for you, tells how the soul travels from body to body and how we can end the cycle in birth and death by reaching the ultimate abode. But yet another reason, which we say as occultists, and I've said for many years, the whole 
idea is to go beyond body to body, being recycled into another body. So that's actually the goal of the black man and black woman, to get out of being recycled. And just the mere fact that you are on this path of trying not to be recycled into another body, to be reincarnated, this inherently lends itself to making you understand that having the body in the first place must not be good, must not be good. So this book in, uh, by his, his uh, name, well, actually I think he's writing on this guy's writing. Uh, uh, oh, no, it's him, and his name is spelled long, A-C, uh, A period, C period, Next name is B H A K T I V E D A N T A Swami. Last name P R A B H U P A D A Parabu Pada. I think he's one of them famous Swamis that white people like too. Um, an Encyclopedia of Myth and Legend, Indian Mythology by Jan Nappert. Another must have. Right to the point. Anything that says encyclopedia or dictionary must have by Jan Nappert, K-N-A-P-P-E-R-T. And we're gonna, I'm going, what I'm going to do is do my commercial before we get to the other books. Okay, we got herb packs, and I'm about to do the last week of my class this week. So classes are about to start again soon. Now is the time to join if you're still in a mystery about this. No matter where you are in the world, you can take my class. I do it via Skype. If you're in the Atlanta area or you're in the area where you can reach Atlanta, you're welcome Mm -hmm. to sit in at the house. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you are way out of reach, you can come and take the class uh, via Skype. All you have to do is send me an email, panicpack at hotmail.com. I'll send you the information on the class. You can see you can do payment installments, but now is the time to join up for the next semester. Let's get it on. Anybody who's already made payments, you'll be getting the call soon. And, uh, again, this class, I recently put up a sample of one of the classes on Skype. uh, I'm sorry, on uh, YouTube, so you can hear what type of things are going on. Very magical, very potent. Very life changing. This is a must. You should not, and you should not, and cannot sleep on how powerful this is. It's a powerful training. It is designed for those who are new and those who are old. So, no matter what level you are at, if you are ready to increase your magic, you are ready to actualize all the shit you've been hearing in lectures, actualize all the shit you've been reading, actualize all the shit you've been in YouTube. This is the class to help you get over the hump of, of, of philosophy and right. a doer in it. Get your hands dirty. Get your hands dirty. I'm going to show you in detail how to do that. It's a four-week class. We rock and roll. You have absolute access to me. Any questions that come up within the curriculum, we go through it thoroughly. We go through it thoroughly. Four weeks of hardcore class on Sundays, and we rock and roll. This is where you want to be. Send me an email, and I'll send you the packet. And, again, don't just think I'm hyping you up. When I send you the information, I also attach Mm -hmm. email to those who have taken the class already. You can hear from them directly what it is that this class has done for them to change their lives. So you can hear directly from the people who took the class before and after. You don't have to think I'm gassing you up. But my words should be good enough because I do not bullshit when it comes down to this, you might get me bullshit if we talking if we if we talking about going to the movies and hanging out. But on this shit, you can mark my words. When I say my word is born, my word is born. Anyone who deals with this class, no matter how long you've been in the game, will change your life. It's a must. And it, and if you're not ready for the class because your finances are, are are just so tight, which this is a cheap class anyway. You're more than welcome to get an herb pack and experiment that way, and those are quite cheap. You know what I'm saying? All right. I, I know you guys, are re- there, there's a, a stack of herbs ready to go. Let's get it on. So all you have to do is send me an email. I'll send you the herb pack. I have plenty of magical tools that you can use to help you transfer. But I always recommend the herb pack because that is something, no matter who you are, 
it always has an impact with your spirituality. That's a must-have. That is a tool, especially for anyone starting out, even anyone on the path. It is a tool that I cannot see anyone not at least experimenting with once, twice, or put it, put it in, in your system of magic. I cannot see you going without this. Number one, it's so cheap. Number two, it's organic and can do nothing to you to fuck you. It does. It's not a drug, so you're mm-hmm. not taking drugs. If you if you if you're not a smoker, you can also drink it as a tea. So I cannot. I, there's no rational reason in my mind that no one you're not rushing to get this tool that is so safe, so effective mm-hmm. to help you have a pineal experience. Because after a while, you cannot be around here just talking about this shit. My goal is to get everyone to say, oh, I get it. Once we finish talking about it, I want to feel this shit. So I have the tools that help initiate that jump start. Definitely a herb pack is going to initiate it for anybody who sits, in fr- who, who sits in front of it and lights one up or sips a cup. That's going to do it. But definitely anyone who takes the class, we're talking, real, we're talking grown-up shit. You take the class, we're talking grown-up. We're talking herb pack, we're talking somebody who's definitely on their path. And if you're on your path, this is the thing to get. See me on it. Email me, panicpack at hotmail.com. I'm going to send you an email, send you your shit. And, and, this, and I send out a lot of stuff. So people always say, Panic, I didn't get this, I didn't get that. If I did, I'll check out your shit, and I will resend. It's not a big deal. I re, will resend if I can get a delivery confirmation. Shit happens all the time. Sending out mass amount of packages. Some of them shit gets lost. Most of them shits to Europe get lost a time or two. So if you're not getting it, you don't have to get huffy. You don't have to get excited. I will not forget about you because in my heart, I want every motherfucker to have this so everyone can have the experience. I want you to have it more than I don't want you to have it. The only problem is I cannot give it away for two reasons. One, I pay for this stuff, and two, I still need to pay rent. I need to pay rent so I don't have to worry about that so I can keep going to be able to give you a book list and classes and eventually come with a book that I really believe is going to take all of us to the next level, and that's what I'm getting back from the people who are actually editing it, which my girl Tammy is going through it now. She's going through it like a dog. Give me the next chapter. Give me the next chapter. So I'm, I'm just reviewing, making sure her shit is straight. Then we're about to go to editing which means we're going to put it in book format, and the next thing is printing it up. It will come out this year soon, soon. We're looking, we're looking in a few months, folks. The book is coming out. The other tools I say you should get, and then we're going to get back to the book list, is com. Go to that website. He has a world of tools. What's guaranteed is what everyone must get from him is the chakra package that he has. Everyone's always asking for chakra rocks. The first step at balancing yourself is your chakras. I talk about this in detail in my class. So everyone needs the seven chakra stones. He has them in the pack for a very good price. But he has a world load of shit that you can get. Now, I gave in the last class, in some of this class, a bunch of Botanica books, and I explained to people how the Botanica has a whole list and a whole language of items you need for magical, ritual, traditional magic. Most of those things Dr. Aleemelbay.com has. So he'll be your one-stop shopping. It's from a brother we know, so a brother we can support. People who send it out, him and his queen, Kadira, they send it out with love. So not only that, it'll be a love transi- uh, transaction. It's supporting some brother we know, and you get what you need. So I don't want to lean heavy on myself and lean well, it's a support thing because we love to do what we do. We love to teach this. We love to teach this. I was teaching this when I was working a regular job. So I didn't teach this and all of a sudden sell herb packs. I was teaching this working a regular job, and then the spirit told me to sell herb packs, to teach this extra hard for you, to, to be able to go extra hard for you. You get what I'm saying? So it was spiritual, not just a calculated move for you to support us. So I'm not going to lie, we do, uh, we, we do love to do this, but we do appreciate and love and need the support to be able to do what we're doing. But ultimately, we, we do have shit that serves you better. You're not supporting me with a bum-ass uh, 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 gift. The support that you're get, uh, getting from me 
is something you actually get that's way more than any donation you get. Our classes and every single class I've ever delivered, there was a student, I'm up to the 12th cycle, there was a student in that class that said, these classes are worth way more than you asked for. I got that, and I've got all of my classes on tape where I can prove that. These classes are worth more than you asked for. The end. The end. So we offer, a lean like myself, we offer to you much more than we ask for. But we're in this earthly goddamn uh, prison, this earthly uh, goddamn uh, 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 jail cell, and we, like everybody else, have to pay bills. I don't care how spiritual you are, spiritual are, you have to pay bills. The spiritual work that you're doing is for where you're about to go, which is who you really are. That's why that's important. But you still have to recognize your human existence needs to exist. So um, also know there's a sister out of Detroit named Tiffany. Um, I will give you her email. It's Tiffany Messenger, spelled with an I in. It's T I F F A N N I, the word messenger, at yahoo.com. If you couldn't get that, email me and I'll forward you her information. She's, she's a, She took the class, and that's where I met her, but actually, before she took the class, she actually called in to the show. And I met her first on the show, and she said she would take the class. And sure enough, she took it in that same cycle. And it was an absolute pleasure meeting her. Is one of those spirits, those, those angelic hearts that you meet, and you just cannot get enough of their energy. Sweetheart from Detroit. Um, real angelic, you know what I'm saying. And, you know, she was very hard dealing with the fairies. Real fairy, real fairy genuine do anything and bring plants to life and all this kind of stuff. So she was one of, so when she called the show, she just said on the show, Panic, I just love you so much, I'm going to knit you all this shit and send you all this shit for no reason, before the class, before anything. And she followed through. She sure enough did. Now, of course, I'm not going to wear no knitted shit. You know what I'm saying? So she, so she made Khadijah a bunch of those lock nets and all of that stuff. And to thank her, I talked about her lock nets on the show. A few people bought lock nets. But she's like, Panic, I really want to make you something. I said, look, I'm old. All you got to do is make me a blanket. She made me a damn blanket. This is the most comfortable fucking blanket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was getting my Linus on with this shit. So uh, thankful for that. But then she hit me with, and I've told people about her work and people been buying it, but I was waiting for her to come up with something a little bit more magical than I could talk about. And I didn't really want to initiate it because I didn't want to be the used car salesman or blog talk. So, but if she came up with something magical, then, it, then that means it would be spiritual, and that means I really could talk about it, and God damn it, she did. She's like, Panic, I made these goddamn fairy slippers. I'm like, now, nigga, you went backwards. Because ain't no goddamn way I'm going to be putting on any goddamn crocheted slippers. Nigga, I don't even operate with that level of motherfucking Atlanta enthusiasm, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to happen. Oh, nigga, come on, nigga, let me show you a picture. That's not going to sweeten up the deal. You know what I'm saying? So she showed me a picture, and I could hear maybe her feelings is getting hurt. <laughs> so I said, okay, listen, send me these slippers, but I will wear them around the house, even my goddamn son is going to laugh at me. Well, what's your size and what's Khadijah's size? So she sent them. I put these motherfuckers on and went directly into the motherfucking fairy kingdom. I said, God damn it. I took a picture of these shit oh, wow. and put them shit on the shit. And Khadijah was like, nigga, you shouldn't take a picture because your feet was ashy and shit. I'm like, my fucking feet wasn't ashy. You should have put some lotion on your goddamn ankles before you took that picture. <laughs> And I was like, well, maybe that's why niggas ain't come to blog talk that day. My feet. <laughs> and um, so she, so, but you tap in with these fucking shoes. And she sent me a, a second pair because she sent more, Khadijah more than these hats. Oh, my, I put these shits on these shits and off the hook. 
So I started realizing that was the magic shit I was looking for her. And like we did a read, I did a reading on her niece and all of this knitting holes and web of ISIS, all this perfected shit started coming up. Pan energy as a as the fairy king, all this shit started coming up. You know what I'm saying? She's one of the nymphs, which is Pan's energy. I did all this shit. So her energy was right on time with this fairy kingdom and actually Neith, which is a god of crocheting. You get what I'm saying? And um, so you so you got to get these fucking slippers from her. anybody, especially any, in, in, see, in my class, we do a, uh, one of, in the curriculum, we talk about fairies and how to access fairies. So people know, how many, people who took my class know what, how serious this is, but you could even understand the concept of something like this. You could tap into the fairy kingdom, and just, you put on your slippers, get a plant in your house, feed that plant, you're going to be talking to nature. Nature represents inspiration or the fairy world. Get these fairies in your house, put on your fucking Magic shoes, nigga, it, uh, because, you, see, the shoes represent the root chakra or grounding yourself. So it's like putting these shoes in there, like kind of plant yourself in, 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 in that frequency. Now, my suggestion is, which I told her, do mine green. That's the fairy world. That's the plant world. That's pan. That's, that's me, but that's my color. I would say if you don't have a color or understand the color, free, color frequency yet, go tell her you need green. But if, but if you understand your chakras or you have a deity that you deal with or a color that you deal with, you need to ground yourself in that energy for your work, tell her that color. But you need to get at me. Her email is Tiffany Messenger, T-I-F-F-A-N-N-I, in the word messenger, at yahoo.com. Or if that, like I said, if you didn't catch it, um, email me and I'll forward the I'll forward you her information to Tiffany. And I'm sure she's so sweet. I'm sure she's going to give you guys a reasonable price. So don't take advantage of her. And um, But I'm going to ask her what price she's asking for because these, I'm, I, just like me, I do not tax my black people because I know I can get a lot of money and I know a lot of people will pay a lot of money for just herb packs and the shit I already asked for. My prices are very low compared to what I've seen in this world and what I've seen people pay for shit that doesn't even do half the shit, the shit that I give you absolutely does. I can, give, I can fuck giving you, I can show you testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony for years of what my shit does for a very cheap price. You have paid more going to the movies than you have paid for my herb packs, guaranteed, guaranteed. So you, this time you need to go see them bad ass, terrible ass Ben Affleck movies. And you ain't say nothing. If you even bought a herb pack and it was the worst thing happening, you've lost more going to the movies paying for popcorn and Skittles than you have with an herb pack. It's worth a try at the very least. But I guarantee you that try will change your life. And the only other two I recommend, I'm recommending at this time is Organ. Organ is a very powerful mineral, very powerful substance um, that is very life-changing. All it has to do is be in your field, in your area, to, to have an impact in your hand, on your person, or near your person, or in your home to change the frequency to what they call negative ions. Negative ions are what you use uh, or what you feel when you feel good. And you usually feel these negative ions around nature. So you have more plants in your house, more negative ions. Uh, when you go to the beach, a picnic, anything in nature uh, is filled with negative ions. That's why you feel a certain amount of comfort and relaxation um, around these negative ions uh, around nature because you're getting filled with negative ions around beach. So when you have more natural things in your house, more negative ions, uh, Himalayan salt rocks. There are also spiritual things you can bring in your house that bring forth negative ions as well, certain crystals. But organ is one of those things. Now, positive ions actually wear you down from the microwave, from the TV, from your HD. Anything that creates an EMF field are actually positive ions, which is all over your house naturally. So you want to balance it out with negative ions. So when you put the organ in your house, all that shit that's in your house, it starts to counteract 
all the shit that's natural in your house that you have to use, your lights, especially these new lights versus the old standard light bulb. Now they have these new swirly lights. Those swirly lights are fucked up, really toxic. In fact, the same person, Jerry Miller, who does the organ, told me about these lights. He said, if that shit breaks in your house, you better open the window and leave for at least a half an hour. Then come back with gloves and a mask to pick that light up to throw it out. That's the new lights. Now these new lights are the law. They don't even make the old light bulbs anymore. Whatever's on the shelf is what's left. Mercury filled, exactly. Thank you, activated old neck. Mercury filled. And with that being said, um, all of that stuff is actually toxic poison that you're breathing, seeing, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, so the organ is something you will have in your house, on your person, in your area that can counteract that. Jerry Miller makes the organ, and he makes it on a master craft level. It's not just a pile of organ, a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of rock with organ in it that I've seen on YouTube because now everyone can make an organ based upon the YouTube video, but that shit comes out like a fucked up YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? Because people have sent me their gifts. Kind of, this is the first time I'm making organ, and I wanted to send you one. Well, I could tell it's the first time, nigga. Look like you shit this out. You know what I'm saying? Did you fashion this with your anus and just send it on over? Put or, sprinkle organ on some doo-doo? It's fucked up. But because it's a gift, I'll still keep it. I got the shit piled up. You know what I'm saying? My man Kadem, who took the uh, class and actually bought some more herb packs today, this nigga sent me a a, a damn, uh, uh, like, crap, like something a three-year-old would make. You know what I'm saying? In arts and crafts. It was like panic. It just came to me. This is a goddamn fairy wand. I said, Kadeem, this is probably one of the most powerful gifts I've got. I put that shit right on my fairy altar. To this day, it sits there. When he took the class, he, he took it online so he couldn't come and see it. But I said, Kadeem, oh, I said, you the one who, because this, fucking one just came in the mail. I said, who sent me this shit? Like my little cousin? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I put that shit in the garage. I'm like, nigga, I ain't fucking, I don't, I don't know what that is. I thought about this shit. I said, that shit is powerful. This nigga took his time to take some construction paper and make a one with that shit. So I took that shit, put it on the ferry altar that where it says today, in power. So I, I respect and love all gifts. But if I'm going to have some organ, I want some good shit, too. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I see Jerry Miller. Now, you can contact Jerry Miller on Facebook. I keep hearing that his Facebook is full. So you, if you can send him an email on Facebook, if you're not on Facebook, yet again, email me, panicpack at hotmail.com, and what I'll do is give you Jerry Miller's information, and you can see his work, all sorts of pyramids and all sorts of doodads. He puts these symbols in the pyramids, crystals in the pyramids, along with the organ to, to amp it up. I think he makes special orders, so if you have a particular crystal you're working with, he probably could get it in the organ pyramid or the organ shape. And It's a, it's a whole world of what he's doing. And, again, I, want, I need you to understand this. I'm not the guy that brought him into the existence on these shows. Jerry Miller was operating years before I've even mentioned his name. He was a, he, he's been selling organ years before I even mentioned his name. So it's not like I'm putting him on. He's an OG in this. So what I'm trying to um, do is only reflect something that has been going on. And um, you all probably know his queen, Mama Congo, on Facebook. She's Sandra Frazier. Oh, she makes these spirit bottles. You need to see her work as well. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I don't want to sound like a used car salesman, but once you connect with Jerry, you need to see all that they have. You know what I'm saying? You need to see all I have. And some of you already should know this by now. You know what I'm saying? These, these, these are very spiritual people. When I, In fact, when I went to buy stuff, as much stuff as I buy, you, they, they've given me more free stuff. I won't say that's going to happen to you, but I'm sure you will walk away feeling that you are satisfied with, with your purchase as opposed to saying, well, this was too much and that was too much. All gone, the thing to do. So all the commercials are out the way. Going to get back to these books. I think I got everybody, but y'all need to see this. Don't sleep on these fairy slippers. 
like I said, by, when you talk, and, and all you lonely niggas out there, you want to buy these ferries because this sister is F I I'm fine. She got that good white hair. You know what I'm saying? That smooth Indian shit. Sweetheart, she ain't got no dude. She's all of that on her magic. So y'all, whoever buy these fairy slippers, if y'all a single lonely dude, y'all better come with your best game. But she's like a sister now. So if I know who y'all niggas are, and y'all niggas is y'all niggas is on some bullshit, I'm a definitely fucking, I'm a definitely hate, I'm a definitely cock block. Like panic's a cock block. Yeah, I'm a cock block. <laughs> but uh, you know, if she she's a sweet sister. I would definitely love to see her. I don't think I don't know if she's looking or nothing like that. But like shit, boy, oh boy. You know, Khadija got my ass scooped up. Ain't no doubt about that. Khadija is my other half. Ain't no doubt about that. But if let's just pretend if this was before Khadija, I'd have been head over heels for this girl in Detroit. She's a sweetheart, got a nice heart. She's a a conscious woman on her woman shit, on her fairy shit, on her magic shit. A sweetheart, you know what I'm saying? Ain't hanging out on Facebook with the rest of you rogue niggas, you know what I'm saying? Sweetheart, good person, no kids. Oh, y'all niggas don't know. She's black gold, nigga. It's like finding a virgin. So when I got my sweetheart, but I was like, damn, this would be us. This would be. I would do everything in my power. Y'all would be. Y'all would be talking to me from Detroit right now if there was no <laughs> sister Khadija. But Sister Khadija, I tell you this, I had dreams of Khadija when I was a six-year-old boy. When I seen Khadija, I said, that's the motherfucker I used to dream about, the lady that used to get in my bed when I was six years old. So you know, ain't no getting past that shit. You know what I'm saying? I am totally, absolutely, positively content. But, you know, me and Khadija ain't stupid. I'm still looking at this going, that's so somebody that will be an excellent queen, an excellent queen. I, like I said, I don't know if she's looking or would even entertain the shit, but she's excellent. She's a, she's good people, you know what I'm saying? Good people and fine as hell, you know what I'm saying? So y'all niggas better get them fairy slippers and get some game going, you know what I'm saying? All right, back to these books. Uh, um, an excellent book, The Way of the Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva is spelled B-O-D-H-I-S-A-T-T-V-A. We already had a discussion on the Bodhisattva, so this is another detailed book on the Bodhisattva. This was kind of a little bit complicated to read based upon how the dude was writing. It's, it's written by, it's a translated book. It's written by uh, Shantideva, Shantideva, S-H-A-N-T-I-D-E-V-A, and it's pretty good. I would say get it if you got extra money, you know what I'm saying, and the Bodhisattva is your thing. Um this is a pretty just good book. Just, just um, I think the title speaks for itself is Return of the Goddess by Edward C. Uh, Whitmont. I actually have the hardcover. This is actually an older book. I got this book from Strand. Strand is a used bookstore. Sometimes you'll see them on Amazon. These are the ones that uh, uh, might be out of print sometimes, but you can get it as good. Strand was a bookstore in New York. They had a shitload of used books because they buy old books. So I'm going to go through a lot of Strand books, too. That may be old, but they got a lot of shit in there because it was before it got all new age. When they got new age, that's when they started seeing all these people were into it, so they started hiding shit. In the older Strand books, you'll find them saying straight up shit that's so hot and the statements are so fierce because they didn't think it was never meant for mass people at that time. Um, and you and like the books I tell you, if you can get these type of books, oh my God, they, the pictures of the Camite shit in color is so off the hook. But in this book, The Return of the Goddess, Edward C. Whitmont, uh, you know the modern dilemma, consciousness and evolution, uh, the patriarchal myths, uh, the myths for our times, vision for a new age, you know, kind of go through that kind of stuff. All right. Um, this book, excellent. Shakti, Realm of the Divine Mother Goddess by Vanna, uh, Vanna Mali, V-A-N-A-M-A-L-I. The Shakti energy, Shakti is the goddess, but Shakti energy represents the divine spark of life, at the, uh, uh, the divine spark of kundalini life. 
And technically, every goddess is every black man, every man's uh, Shakti energy. So your consort is actually your, your life force energy, i.e., your woman is what gives you life. And you, I would say that as a concept before, but now being in a relationship for four years with Khadija, someone who I am madly in love with, I understand the life force energy of Shakti because now every single thought that I have has everything to include her as her perspective. And, you know, the classics, they oh, that's some whip shit, but it's way beyond that. You know what I'm saying? It's, she, it's now our synchronicity is so tight, it's actually an extension of myself. It's not actually doing it for another person. It's actually doing it for myself now. You understand what I'm saying? Which was a concept Bobby used to always scream at me. I'm like, nigga, leave me alone. I'm ready to get some pussy. His whole thing was no, 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 no. Your spirituality goes to another level when you're in a relationship. Nah, nigga, that's the whip shit. You know, you know, nah, nigga, I need my this, I need my that. And then eventually what happens because now that I'm into the spiritual shit, I got a different type of attention, which was easier basically to get women. And so, so now I'm getting my fill, which I was already straight already because I made rap songs, but I was getting my fill and to the point where it got tiresome. You get what I'm saying? It was actually going nowhere because now that I had this lust for transformation based upon my spirituality, what I started to see was stagnant was just getting pussy. You get what I'm saying? You're just like, oh, now I'm, they'll do this and I could get them to do that and it'll be twosomes and threesomes and rituals and the witch did that. We'll do that at the eclipse. You just want another shit to do with pussy. So now I'm looking at, hey, damn, I need a I need an opposite, soulmate shit. You get what I'm saying? Khadija comes. So now, understanding that, I always understood the concept of the intellectual understanding of Shakti, but now living out, you understand um, the stuff that I do for Khadija, and she'll tell you I do a hell of a shit for her physically. On the human level, we live... As, as very romantically, and I'll do any, you know, I'll be in Walmart singing sonnets, dancing and all this kind of shit, making songs out of her name. She don't even listen no more. I'll be just in Walmart, oh, like doing R&B with her name. She don't even, like, shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Country songs, oh, Khadija, Khadija, Khadija. Because you shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I make all sorts of songs. It's, you know, one love, one love, Khadija, Khadija, <laughs> you only just get one Khadija. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, nigga. As soon as you get in the car, I make up a new song. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll be like, yo, I sing sonnets to you all fucking day. Khadija knows how to sing, too. You know, never sings around the house. <laughs> I sing more than her. So now she's like, I think I'm going to start up my band again and, and start recording again. I'm like, nigga, I need to record. I do more. I'm on two. I need to make a hot jam. I can sing more than you around this motherfucker. I don't be cruel. Khadija, I wouldn't be so cruel to you. I'm in Walmart. Everybody looking at me. I'm doing the dance and the rap. Hey, lady, don't you be shy. That shit probably used to do ridiculous shit. But ultimately, I'm actually, see, it's for her or through her, but I can see it, I'm doing it for me. You get what I'm saying? I'm, no matter what she's doing, I'm fucking extremely excited about her, i.e., she's my Shakti energy, my life force energy coming through her. You get what I'm saying? Now, when, now for her, I see she does this shit to every other per, plant, person on the planet but me. Oh, my man panic. My man panic. Oh, my man panic. Don't do that. Oh, my, pay, my man's jealous. Now, my man panic. Panic be doing this. But she talks about me like, I'll be like, yo. She come out and say, you need to stop talking about me. I would be so fucking sick of you. You ever meet somebody and they always talk about their girlfriend or their man? You're like, shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. Like, I'd be like, DJ, I know you people want to say shut the fuck up to you. Oh, Panic don't be doing that. Every, she, every chance she get to tell somebody else about Panic, she will. I'd be like, shit, I want to meet this nigga Panic. You know what I'm saying? He sounds <laughs> sexy. He sounds he sound real sexy like Denzel. You know what I'm saying? So I know I'm her life force energy or her Shiva energy, you get what I'm saying, or 
what you would look since the she you know, her God force energy. She looks up to me or her, her I, I'm I'm her papa. You know what I'm saying? But she's my Shakti energy. So you experience these and now see, I didn't get it then, but Bobby was telling me that shit back then too. I said, Bobby, you're a fucking sucker for love. He's like, no, you need to enhance your spirituality. There's a movie called Adaptation with uh 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 what's the dude they was calling a fucking vampire who's in the rock? Uh Co- Coppola's son, uh Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage was in this movie called Adaptation. And he met some girl. She said, are you still with Jenny? He said, uh, you know, I'm no longer with Jenny. He said, you know, when you was dating Jenny, she used to talk behind your back. She used to laugh at you. She used to do this. She used to do that all behind your back. He said, that was her problem. That wasn't my problem. I was in love. I was like, I get what you're saying, but I didn't really. Now I get it because Really, the experience of love is actually you releasing yourself. Now, Bobby also said in one of his lectures, which I found a little bit more profound, but now get it more. He said, love is actually yours because we tend to think I'm with a girl and she's supposed to provide that love for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm with Khadija. She's supposed to provide that love. No, I'm supposed to provide my own love. I'm supposed to open up my heart chakra and fall deeply in love with her because it's my chakra, it's my heart, it's my melanin, it's my kundalini. I'm actually supposed to release myself, and she becomes the object for me to release myself. Therefore, she becomes my life force and my shakti energy. You get what I'm saying? So now on a light level, if you're doing it on a human level, some bitch got you whipped that ain't doing shit for you, you just, yeah, okay, you know what I'm saying, whatever she's doing. That ain't got nothing to do with it. You know, you definitely want that. You, you don't want, you can make this anybody, but you don't want it to be anybody. You need somebody to be on your level of respect and at least feel the same way about you honestly. Because half the chicks that I was fucking with felt like me, felt me based upon brother panic. If I pass gas in front of them, the lecture is over. You get what I'm saying? So they're liking me based upon the idea of what consciousness is not on consciousness plus there's a human side because Khadija's is still in love and you should see how dirty I got my office right now. She's a neat freak. She walks by that shit in, in, in size. Uh, she's like, I know I'm in love because we wouldn't have made it, you know what I'm saying, any other way. So, so for the humanity, she can, she's able to put up with that as well as enjoy our conscious fruit. That's Shakti energy. So it's very important for you to understand Shakti because at the very least, it should eventually become love, but it is absolutely what should be motivating you in your consciousness, which is actually love once you start to decode. Because I wouldn't have said love is what made me conscious, but after I tapped into Kuan Yin and that compassion, it was love. It was love for our people, our plight. And, and compassion for our situation that made me say, I need to do something to change it more than whatever Michael Dyson is doing and Tavis Smiley, which is absolutely fucking nothing. So in this book, they talk about all the goddesses. They talk about the, he talks about the goddess Shakti because there is a goddess Shakti, so, which is the sleeping kundalini. And even the marriage today is uh, uh, Shakti energy because Shakti in the mythology, um, Shiva is sleeping, and Shakti rises up and meets Shiva and wakes him up. So that's nothing but Kundalini meeting the pineal gland. Shiva is the pineal gland, the hemp smoker, the the the, the aesthetic, the do nothing. You get what I'm saying? Lives in the fucking mountains. That's the pineal gland. So Shakti goes and raises him up. Now, later on, Pravati cultivates them. They tell you about different stages of your consciousness. Uh, Kali, in the end, becomes the destroyer with him. Shakti cultivates him and so on and so forth, as the earth, earthbound does, Pravati. Now, Shakti, the kundalini energy, this is also played out in the marriage. So in the marriage, the man waits by the altar. He represents the sleeping pineal gland, and the woman walks up the aisle. She represents the Shakti energy going to meet him, to join in union. Now, Pravati in the mythology, she's, she's the ultimate housewife and makes him the ultimate husband. And it's in, when you read the mythology, not karma but kama, 
which is like Cupid. There's a deity in Hindu mythology named Kama. Kama tries to shoot his arrow into Shiva to make him fall in love with Parvati. At this point, Shiva was the ultimate aesthetic, the ultimate conscious nigga. The ultimate um, is all about consciousness, and I told you that's the level I was on. I was on the level at, of the ultimate conscious nigga. I, did, I, got, I got pussy because I needed to get my nuts off and my magical alchemy tantric shit off, but then I went right back to my house and got on these books, got on these lectures, got on this alchemy, got on these rituals, stayed at the Botanica, and, 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 and it had nothing to do with love. I see you on Tuesday, you suck nuts, you squeeze nuts, you wash nuts. The whole team was on their job. And y'all get together and, and y'all go shopping for crystals together. It was all about that, the ultimate aesthetic. So they described this in the mythology of Shiva, and then you had all these gods trying to present Pravati to him. Look, nigga, look, nigga. And he thought she was the most beautiful thing in existence, but he would resist because she represented earth and she represented the illusion. He was saying, this whole ain't real. She's an illusion. I'm about my conscious business. So Bobby was representing common to me constantly. Find a love interest. Find one you love. I'm like, well, I'm fucking this one. Make that your girl. You're going to bring her? No, I'm just fucking her. You're going to bring? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was playing that comma. Now, there's more in that mythology, but ultimately he gets with her, and he's uh, cultivating his wild, these dirty, wild, hemp-smoking ways through her being the ultimate wife. Even before her, they tried it with, a, a, I think the name was Sati, which you heard Sati in the, uh, uh, the, the second matrix. She was the little girl representing the son. Sati in the mythology was his first wife that tried to cultivate him but eventually, when she made the transition, she became the yoni, and Shiva became the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the lingam. So when the lingam worship and the yoni worship um, of Shiva and yoni, which is actually Sati, you know, so they talk about him having a number of consorts, but all in the context of trying to explain the pineal gland, consciousness and spirituality and the ultimate force, the God force in you as the builder and destroyer or the beginning and the end, your whole path on earth. So you need to get into the Shiva book and these get into these Shakti energies to understand life force or Kundalini energy. The Mahadeva, Paramaswati, uh, uh, Prakriti, uh, Maha, uh, 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 Lalita, that's a nigga name, Tripura Sundari, Kamaraswati, Durga, um, Chandika, that's another nigga name. So, you know what I'm saying? Chimunda, that's another nigga name. Sati, Dakshaini, Mahisha uh, Ramarandi, these are all Shaktis, or these are all uh, goddesses that they talk about the Shakti aspect of these goddesses. Pravati, um, Arpana, Guri, uh, uh, Guri Ganga, Kali, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Radha, uh, uh, Talasi, Sita, uh, Sav, uh, Tiri, Shiva Duti, Adi Shakti, Mahamaya, Sri uh, uh, Chak, uh, Sweet, Sweet Chakra, Diva Kundalini. So, uh, Excellent. One of my favorite. This is one of my favorite books. That's Shakti, the Realm of the Divine Mother, by Vanamali. V A N A M A L I. Uh, what time are we at? All right, we got a little bit of time. Let's get to more of these books. Uh, Hanuman, an introduction. That's one of the better Hanuman books um, that I was speaking of by D Dev Duck Patanak. Uh, D E V D U T T. Last name P A T T A N A I K. He also has a couple of more books. And he has one on Vishnu, Vayu, and maybe Pravati or, or, or somebody else, uh, Durga or Kali. Anything by him is excellent. He explains it right to the point. Um, and uh, uh, what he does, remember I told you Hanuman's stories in the Ramayana. He takes Hanuman's story from the Ramayana, and he uh, takes all those parts, breaks them down, and gives his thing on it. 
gives his idea on it. So it's excellent stuff. All right, let me get more books. Ah, oh, shit. I'm going to keep this party rolling. Put these back. No doubt. And, uh, you know, we still got shit to do. I think we're going to be able to get to a lot of this, more of this today. Next week's show will be the last show. I don't care where we're at. We're not going over four shows on this subject. I don't want to wear you out. But this will be a legendary uh, a legendary series. I, I believe this is a good series oh, yeah. thus far. And, um, you know, because it's rare you can get all of these books in one sitting. And I'm getting more books now. I was just going to say, Brother Pan. Yes. I was just going to say, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you in the beginning. <laughs> I'm already over it. Let it go. Just got to know how this flows, dog. Right. Already over it. Don't even try, don't worry about it. We're on to some other shit. Right, let me get more books out. Let me bring a stack. Try to go through these a little bit faster because I'm going to get through these, some of these tonight. So I'm going to keep it going, keep it moving fast. All right. Another good book to get. I've seen this around a lot. A lot of, a lot of us have it in consciousness. It's called Kundalini, The Arousal of the Inner Energy. Um, excellent book. It's by Anjit Mukherjee. A-J-I-T, last name M-O-O-K-E-R-J-E-E, and everything you want to know about Kundalini. Excellent, really simple, to-the-point book on Kundalini. This is one of the ones you read all the way through. Excellent book. Um, This is a good book. I need to – actually, I was looking for this. I have to put this to the side. called The Astral World. Um, It Seems Dwellers in Phenomena by Swami Pen uh, Chadesi. In it, he does a good explanation and a simple explanation of the astral world, um, you know, astral traveling, a little bit on astral traveling, but the things you'll see, the kind of phenomenon – and some explanations on it. So that's a good book on the astral world. I, I want to keep that to the side because um, that's another one I can recommend in my class when we deal with the astral world, we, which we deal with in depth. Um, this is a pretty good book if you can still find it, Metaphysical Theorists and, and Metaphysical Dictionary by Sarah Flowers. It's by a company called Kessinger Publishing, K-E-S-S-I-N-G-E-R, and Kessinger Publishing is excellent. Look them up, go to their website, and see what you see. Because what they do is they actually republish rare reprints. So books that were dead and gone from 1920, 1930, 18, whatever, what they do is they just get the copyright and they just print it. They actually use the same font as the original book. So they're not rewriting it. They're just taking the actual book the way it was written, and putting it under their, uh, under their cover. Um, like for instance, let me see if I can find out when this book was written. This book was written in 1942. You get what I'm saying? So you'll find old shit. And really that's good for certain books because certain books, this was, again, before the New Age movement, and they started saying, be careful and don't do that, and you'll get in trouble for doing that, but it was giving it to you funky and raw. So you got to pick and choose and see what you think will be worth it. It's usually cheap, these type of books. So anything by Kessinger Publishing, look, look them up. Um, the Palladian Tantric Workbook, Awakening Your Divine Ba. The author is Amora Kuan Yin, A-M-O-R-A-H-Q-U-A-N-Y-I-N. She also did a book which is more famous called The Palladian Workbook, Awakening Your Divine Ka, Amora Kuan Yin. These are good books, um, but you have to read this with a certain amount of knowing because when we came out as black people and said we are from Sirius, and Sirius is the center of the universe, another star system that is very advanced is called the Palladian star system. So white people who are always dying to give themselves a spiritual origin, of course, said, well, we're from Pallades. And then, of course, with their sinister minds, um, some of the books that they're writing, you know, the Syrians were evil and 
they were, you know, that same Anunnaki story, they came to mind bold, became the Syrians doing this in Atlantis. But the Palladians are the divine people of light and so on and so forth, and we're here to balance it out. Now, that's all bullshit. We're Syrians and we're Palladians because when I did the work, when I was reading this, I got the channel that I was hanging out on Palladies. I'm from Sirius, mm-hmm. but hung out on Palladies, and that's where I actually trained. And, we, and I could go into a whole bunch of stuff on Palladies and it being nigger-related, including where the Orishas come from, because there are seven planets in the place with the seven major Orishas, and um, so on and so forth. But So when you read it, you need to know she, she, she does do channels. Interesting enough, she talks to a channel named Paula, which I knew was the Palos. And which in, at the time I spoke on it, and Bobby may have spoke on it, about this, she was actually getting a Apollo channel, and we use we needed we put our melon into it and really decoded what she was getting. So you got to read it with a with with some of this understanding some of, some of this white uh, stereotype typical uh, uh, scared ass paranoid bullshit is in it. But other than that, she gives a lot of good information because she's a channeler or likens herself to me. Um, this is also a good book, Alchemy of the Nine Dimensions, the 2011-2012, The Nine Dimensions of Consciousness by Barbara Hand Klo. Very good book. She, she deals with uh, the dimensions. Like the dimensions could be defined based upon whatever study you are. There's no absolute fourth dimension or absolute fifth dimension. Based upon what you study, the fifth dimension could be defined either way. The only thing that could be defined here is the third dimension, they, and only because we're in it. So those who are in, and that's only because we're calling it third dimension as well. For somebody else in another dimension, I'm sure this is probably, they're not calling this the third dimension, or perhaps they are, you know what I'm saying? And But even within the third dimension, there's still differences, because if in the 70s I told you we would be on the computer doing radio shows, you'll be able to email me at Panic Pack and pay through PayPal, you would say, you sound, you sound, that's poppycock. You know what I'm saying? Well, everyone will have phones because now the 70s are actually a sub-dimension within this dimension. So it was the 80s and the 90s because certain, you know, when there was a time when we watched the Jetsons, they would, they would make a phone call face to, you know, seeing each other's face. Well, we do that now through Skype. We don't even bat an eye to it. You would have said that's magic back, then, back in the 70s. Barbara Hand Klo also did another book called The Palladian Agenda. That's a more famous book about Palladies. A New Cosmology for the Age of Light, introduced by Brian, uh, Brian Swinney, but Barbara Hand Klo. So uh, I would say, uh, uh, you know, running that book if you want to, if you get into this Palladian thing. Another book, No Home Should Be Without the Serious Mystery, The New Scientific Evidence of Alien Contact 5,000 Years Ago by Robert Temple. Uh, the only thing about this book is he goes very hard at trying to say that the Camites were influenced by aliens. Anything to say it's not niggas. So, of course, because they can't find the fucking fortitude within themselves to say this is black, aliens uh, did it. He even has a picture of Akhenaten, and because of Akhenaten's misshapen uh, skull and, and body features, what he, what he says is, uh, you know, see, that's an alien. But other than that, he goes very hard on the science. He shuts down all that bullshit Anunnaki uh, 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 alien agenda bullshit and explains uh, what the Anunnaki are, you know, uh, and he connects number 50 to Anunnaki, which is connected to the 50 flotations of Series B around Series A or Series C, whatever that is. Um, and, you know, he, go, he goes very hard in the science, a must-have. In fact, Bobby Hemmett's first lecture was on uh, 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 this book, The Dogon and the Serious Mystery. He talks about the Dogon people here in depth. Okay, invoke, visualiz- invoke the Goddess, Visualizations of Hindu, Greek, Egyptian Deities by Kala, uh, Kala Tarot, K-A-L-A-T-R-O-B-E, book speaks for itself, uh, how to invoke the goddess from all these different places based upon the, uh, the god- that goddess mythology. When I was studying the uh, Palladian uh, stuff, these are the books that came about. Return of the Bird Tribes by Ben Carey, um, because 
in the Palladian study, uh, Ella Fitzgerald came through and started telling me to understand the language of the birds or the hummingbirds. So then William Henry did a whole book called Language of the Birds. Get that. And they, and basically the language of the birds or the tribesmen beyond the spiritual aspect is the language of uh, the etymology of words. So when you study the etymology of words, the origin of words, which is, which is coming down to Latin, because most of the Latin words, um, the, the origin of the word is a, actually a description of, its, of the origin of the energy. You get what I'm saying? So, for instance, they'll tell you the origin of the word demon. So we know demon to be this bad thing. So, but if you go into the etymology of the word, which comes from uh, Damien, which is its origin, and then they tell you the original Greek meaning of Damien means genius, then that should change your whole reality about what you've been taught a demon is. It means genius. It once meant angel. So they would call you a demon. That meant you you were a genius. But now we know it based upon religion. It means something evil. So you need to throw away the later day meaning and get down to the origins of these words. The best book on that by Sister Cesar Epps, Blacked Out Through Whitewash, very expensive book series, but worth your fucking money. In it, she goes, damn near every word you can think of, Mary, Myrrh, water, and she break down why it shows up here, why Mary means this, why this happened in the Bible, why that happened in mythology, based upon the origin, myrrh, M-E-R, water, maritime law, myrrh, means birth by water, all that shit. So, so when you understand the etymology, you understand the intention behind even this fucking degraded language. When you understand the intention, you, you really is understanding the spiritual intention of these words, of these words. And that within itself is a whole study in the whole language. That's called the bird language or the language of the birds. William Henry did a book on that, a must-have. Anything by William Henry is a must-have besides his fiction. And The Return of the Bird Tribes is Good by Ben Carey. And it deals with the Palladian star system. In the Palladian star system, there is a planet called Era. In that planet called Era, what we got was the Native Americans came from that Palladian star system. So the so the particular black folks that are Native Native American that we know as Native American here, their science is 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 um from Palladians is uh not to you know from the same origin but 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 later day Palladies. So the bird tribes are from Palladies. A uh, a book that lends itself to it but still good within itself, is called The Daily Life of the Egyptian Gods. Demetrius Meeks and Christine uh, Flavard Meeks. Excellent book. Um, it goes, it, it, uh, it, it deals with some of the, uh, like, uh, gods among themselves, meditating, uh, the meditations between the gods and humankind, and, you know, uh, the machine of the universe and the universal god, the gods on earth, the gods of the hereafter, the gods in the hereafter, from dead to the newborn god, the machine of the universe, tottering on the brink, intelligence and knowledge, she took, which was a good chapter. She talks about the difference between intelligence and knowledge, which there is a difference. Origins, destinies, histories, hierarchies, uh, uh, divine bodies, spaces, and places. Now, the difference between intelligence and knowledge is when you hear a nigga talking that bullshit, as we go through the magical grid that foresees through our mind as we reach in to reach out ourselves to come in to Peter on what comes forth in the goddess. That's intelligence. That ain't shit. Knowledge, motherfucker could be talking doobie dubba dooba dooba dubba but tell you something that will change your fucking existence. And that's what you're looking for, somebody to give you breakthroughs, things you can do that make you say, God damn, I get it now. Oh, goddamn, I'm glad you told me that. That has changed. And that's the litmus test that really keeps me going on. When I get emails, thank you, Panny. You have changed my life. Thank you for what you're doing. I was here, now I'm there. Thank you. I was in, I was out. The, 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 the goddamn crack version of that is when you take my class 
That's the crack version of these motherfucking lectures. Y'all niggas need to start smoking crack and sign the fuck up. For real. A good book, a real intellectual book, James Galeck, G-L-E-I-C-K, a book called Chaos, Making a New Science. This is the scientific understanding of chaos. You would have to add the spirituality to it. Okay, this is an excellent, good, good, good book, and I think one that everyone should have at least one of, and this would be a good one to have. This is The Norish Myths, Pantheon Fairy Tale Folklore Library by Kevin Crosley Holland, The Norish Myth. Norish mythology is also called Scandinavian mythology. Norish mythology is where you get Thor, Loki, Freya, uh, uh, you know, I always miss the rest of these guys. Hamondall and, and, and there's a whole bunch of ogres and myths. Basically, the ninth, the nine worlds. Uh, what is what they call? Well, it's probably right here. Um, let me see if I can get it. Uh, you know, they tell you about the Nor- in here the Norse worlds. Is it called Vanar? I think. Uh, let me find the Norse worlds. And, okay. Uh, well, they name the nine, uh, the, and they just call them the nine worlds: Asgard, Denahim, Elephim, Midgard, which is Earth, uh, Jetonium, uh, uh, Nai Devilar, and uh, Savar Telephim. Hell and Niflheim. Um, all right, so they show you this tree and they show you these nine worlds, and uh, these nine worlds uh, make up the worlds of Norse mythology. You know what I'm saying? And you, they show you a little bit of that in the Thor movies because that's what Norse mythology is. Thor and his people live in Asgard. Asgard is the center of this. There's the land of the dwarves. Uh, there's the bridge, the bill for us that connects all of these nine worlds. Uh, land of the dark elves is Sararat Tiflim. Land of the giants, which they sh- which they shown in uh, in the movie. They didn't show the land of the dwarves. Uh, there's a spring of I can't even read that. World of the dead, realm of the dead, which is underneath. The, uh, uh, the dragon, you know, there's this whole, uh, the Midgard serpent, you know, there's this whole uh, 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 layout of this particular world. Now, in it, these stories of mythologies go on and go true. Now, if you were to get into this mythology, you would see it's the same mythology as ours. Odin has the sleep which is nothing but the Osirian falls asleep. You know, he loses his eye, nothing but the Horus. He, he has a hawk on his shoulder, nothing but Horus, uh, Haru. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you, you you see all the Isis and you see all these, the Loki, the god of chaos, Thor, nothing but Shango and all of this kind of stuff, or for African mythology with his hammer. So, so this is our shit. But because it's Scandinavian or Russian or German, or it's German uh, 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 white people, what later day when, I, and I talked about this before, H.P. Helena Blavatsky, who got to, stu- uh, to ha- who got to study with the Tibetans, wrote a book called The Secret Doctrine. When the Germans got a hold of it, what they did was take her book for the consciousness and when well, she talked about this Aryan race, and she took that she took that information and they used they used the Norse mythology as this pure blood this proud von Dutch thing this von thing which is and, and add, mixed it all up together so now you have this these racist Nazis who fall at the backbone on Norse mythology was therefore or Vikings this Viking mythology this pure white Aryan blood mythology which then, of course, is going to make all black people get not be involved or get out of this. And this is because, um, this is because you know, it's so connected to Hitler, which is something they just really 
put their face on and try to make it more divine than anything else, but it's basically the same mythology retold. So if you get into this mythology, you see the Biforce, Rainbow Bridge, Lemba Kundalini, Himmethos, Lemba, the Pine Deal, get into it. So you need to you need to not turn your nose down to Norwich mythology because it's still ours. All right, um, another good book, The Cat in Magic and Myth by O. Field Howley, M. O. Field Howley. Uh, anything you want to know about cat and magic and myth, excellent in that book, especially those who are interested in cat. Another good book, Melchizedek, The Mystery of Fire, Speaks for Itself, Manny P. Hall. Anything you want to know about Melchizedek, write in that book, or you may sonic niggas. Excellent book. My nephew actually gave this shit to me. No, my sister gave it to me. Um, myth and Folklore. This, if you can get it by Henry I. Christ. If you can find it, myths and folklore, in it, they go through on a child's level, on a very basic level, all Greek mythologies, which is nothing more than our mythologies. As Bobby Hemmett has pointed out, Greek mythology is ours, and Greek philosophy is theirs. Later-day bullshit, but the mythology is ours. Um, this is a good book, The Civilization of the Myers, Eric S. Thompson. In it, he goes through everything you need to know about the Mayas. Um, he doesn't say the word Olmec, I don't believe, but he talks about older uh, 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 older civilizations before the Mayas, the Toltecs and all of that stuff, and anything you want to know Maya um, in that book. All right. Um, oh, okay, I was looking for this shit. This dude gave this to me. I was looking for I couldn't find this shit for the life of me. Actually, this dude just weirdly gave it to me. Um, when I was handing out flyers for the Aline lecture, there was a dude that sells crystals, and he just heard, you know, me and him started talking. He said, hey, brother, I want to give you this. And he gave me the book, The Lost Keys of Freemasonry by Nanny P. Hall. So um, in it, uh, if you can get it, it's another Manny P. Hall book. I just uh, gave you a Manny P. Hall book. He did the Mel Chesedek book. And um, apparently it's supposed to be so much hot shit in this book. Let me put it to the side because I wanted to look through it and find it. If you can get it, get it. Um, here's another book, Myths and Legends of Hawaii by William uh, Westervelt. Name spelled W-E-S-T-E-R-V-E-L-T. Myth and Legends of Hawaii, in it they talk about one of the most powerful de- deities, Pele. If you spiritual enough to get with Pele, by all means. Um, we're coming to the point where blog talk might cut us off. If they do, we'll be back la- next week. Next week will be the last week I'll be doing this. Same time, Thursday, 8 o'clock. So join us next week, Thursday, 8 o'clock. There will be four in this book series but I'm going to keep going until I get cut off. But if I get cut off, I want to thank um, our host, and I want to thank um, Brother L tonight. Brother Lean couldn't be with us because we are doing this on Thursdays. But soon and soon enough, we'll get back to our Wednesdays so our viewership can be up like it used to be and get back to some of these good-ass lectures and so on and so forth. But um, we'll be back next week with part four of the book lecture, which I think is an epic series. All right, uh, The Epic of Gilgamesh by Maureen uh, Gallery Kovacs, G-A-L-L-E-R-Y, last name K-O-V-A-C-S. In it, she talks about the Sumerian story, The Epic of Gilgamesh, all the details we never need to know in that. Uh, Myths from Mesopotamia, Creation Flood, Gilgamesh, and others, Another Sumerian book on the myths of Gilgamesh, a new translation by Stephen Daly, D-A-L-L-E-Y. Excellent book um, uh, on just the mythology of Gilgamesh, so all you want to know about the Sumerian mythology. This is an excellent, excellent book coming up, Myths of the Female Divine Goddess, David Lemig and Jake Page, D-A-V-I-D, last name L-E-E-M-I-N-G, and Jake Page. In it, they talk about a few various goddesses, and they give a little bit of detail. And these goddesses are powerful goddesses, a lot of various pantheons. 
And anything you want to know about that feminine divine in this book, this was one of the books I would would recommend to a lot of the sisters who were starting out. I would recommend this book. So in it, he talks about Okinaga, the earth woman, uh, Kunapipi, Newt, sun woman, Diva Shakti, Noon Kiwi, Kali, Oya, Pele, Tillian, Spider Woman, Thinking Woman, Asare, Astarte, Romakumu, uh, Kodi, Duop, Tagaba, Mother, White Buffalo Woman, Ayla, uh, Kot Liku, Hathar, Utzit, and Mayat, Danu, Mawu, Irinom, Amate Rasu, Cherokee Sun, Anana, Demita, Persephone, Sati, Rabi, Hanu Iwi, Le, Corn Mother, Isis, Sybil, Pravati, Changing Woman, Izanami, uh, Maboz, and Bunzi, Hera, Rhea, Hera, Tu, Tiamat, Ganga, Ishtar, Ashira, Lilith, Eve, Pandora, Medusa, Ch- Chiamera, uh, Circle, Pen. Uh, Pen- uh, Pen- Penelope, Penelope, uh, Vitra, Danu, Vagina Girls, Kuan Yin, Athena, Aramis, Aphrodite, Durga, Anat, Maeve, uh, Rianan, Rian- Freya, Frigg, Hakate, Bridget, Mary, Maya, the Virgin of Guadalupe, Darapati, Dara Wicca, Sophia, La Loba, Gaia, Hypothesis, and that's all the goddesses this motherfucker talks about in one city. So you know that is the shit you want to be in. Look at all the goddesses. Here's a little paragraph in detail on each. That's a good book starting out if you want to start to deal with the divinity of the goddess. Crystal Awareness by Catherine Bowman. This is just a good book on crystals, things to do, ways to sit, Crystal combinations, stone combinations, and so on and so forth. Excellent. This is a good book, The Book of Ram. Ram. This deals with Ram by uh, Divdut Panatak. I talked about him earlier. He did the Hanuman book. I, did, I didn't realize I had this book of Ram. I'm going to read it. I'm going to put this to the side. D-E-V-D-U-T-T, last name P-A-T-T-A-N-A-I-K. Again, anything by him, I would say you must read. Um. Robert Graves, Greek Mythology 1 and 2, excellent on Greek Mythology. Robert Graves is almost, I would go as far as to say, is damn near the standard that you would need on Greek Mythology. So in it, he goes through all the Greek Mythology. And, um, you know, he's, like I said, he is uh, the standard in it. So anything by Robert Graves is usually good. So he did Greek Mythology 1 and 2. Every home should be with that to be able to look up you know, certain deities and certain things when things come up. Again, the course reference to course reference um, to course reference when it is you're studying. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we don't throw nothing away because Greek mythology is also ours, so you want to use it to course reference shit as well. All right, I'm getting more books. And we're going to keep going until we get cut off, as I said. All right. Ooh, making some progress today. Get another fat stack for that ass. Oh, God damn you. Brother L? Yeah, I don't know what happened, you know. Um, but Brother Panic was going to get some more books. And I'm not sure where Brother L went. So I'm just going to hang on for a little bit, see if he comes back. Otherwise, uh... Oh, uh, okay. Okay, his call got dropped. Um, yeah, well... Uh, We'll just hang on for a little bit, see if see if it comes back, and if not, then uh, we'll be on next week. I.
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where he is. Um, so we're just gonna leave it until next time. So hope everybody enjoyed the show. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>